right, we're recording. Welcome back to another dilemma. I'm Emma. And I'm Brian. Burns. All right, and today we're going to be talking about things we wish we knew in our 20s. Yeah. <laughs> things you wish you knew in your things 20s. Things I wish I knew in my to 20s. To your favorite 20-year-old, 21-year-old, yeah. but. Almost, yeah. Um, not almost but 21 21 all right not almost 22 is what i was gonna say yeah not quite okay so what are some things that i wish i knew when i was in my 20s or i had done when i was in my 20s no I, just things you wish you knew things i wish i knew you can add bonuses okay well things i wish i knew was to one would be to start a retirement plan when i was young um, Why do you regret that now? No, I just think <laughs> I just think it's one of those things that the earlier you start it, I, you know, I started one eventually, but the earlier I would have started it, the the better that is. The longer that you have for that money to sit in there and um, continue to grow, the better. Now, what kind of retirement plans do you have? So I have a four hundred one k, which so is what your company match. Most companies will offer a 401k. If not, you can do a Roth IRA mm -hmm. on your own. Um, and a lot of companies nowadays, especially larger corporations, will do a company match for the for the 401k. It's like a benefit that they offer you. And you have to look at that as free money. You know, whatever they'll offer you, uh, whatever that percentage is that they're going to, they'll, they'll typically do like a, uh, 50%, 75%, or 100% match for every dollar <clears throat> up to a certain percentage of your paycheck. So, you know, let's say that's 6%, you should make sure that you're at least putting 6% of your paycheck into your 401k because they're going to match that either, you know, whether that's 50% or a dollar mm -hmm. for every dollar, that's still money that you weren't getting on your paycheck yeah and you'll have it in your retirement so it's really smart to get that going as as early as possible because it's money you just kind of put it aside and you don't think about it. it's a percentage of your paycheck so you don't miss it and uh and when you get ready to retire you've got money there and you're not scrambling and trying to figure out what you're going to do at the you know in your in your later days later years is that the only retirement fund you have is the yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much. I mean, I have equity in my house and I have other investments, but as far as, you know, money earmarked for retirement, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so the next thing I would say I would do uh, if I was, when I was, you know, my twenties, which I knew to do would be to start investing. So different than, um, than a 401k or Roth IRA, you should invest in either stocks or real estate. Um, you know, buy buy real estate, buy property, buy a house, um, buy land, buy something, because in the U.S., uh, property values over time they always go up. Mm -hmm. um, the the trends, you know, you'll you'll where's my hand? You'll see it go up, and then sometimes it'll take a dip, but then it'll go up. Oh, you're and Am I shaking? Actually, I'm trying to show. Uh, it's like the camera's flipped, and then anyway. Yeah. Now, isn't the dollar not backed by gold anymore? That's correct. So that's why it's really important to invest your money in tangible things because. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, if you have it in the bank, the bank is usually. Um, you have a savings set. The bank is usually protected, uh, federally protected, um, so you don't have to worry too much about that. But it is good to invest in things because if you put it in the bank, it's like burying it, and you know it's not going to grow. There's nothing, nothing good about putting it in a savings account. You're not going to. Well, with certain savings accounts, it's so small. The amount of interest that you get on it is so small compared emergency, to emergency. You can do emergency savings. True. Sure. Yeah. So that's something I wish I had done. I had started and, earlier. And you know what's really cool is when we were younger, you used to set up fake investment accounts. Mm -hmm. And um, it would be through like Yahoo Finance or um, uh, Wall, e Street, 
Well, yeah, Wall Street Journal had one, E-Trade has one. Yeah, Yahoo Finance had yeah, one. Yahoo Finance had one, yeah, we used to. We would invest and in, we would pick like our favorite companies and we would invest in like Disney or. I would tell you, you each had a thousand dollars to invest. Yeah. Take money and you, you would go in and invest and kind of watch it grow and see how you did. But sometimes you would give us real money. We'd put like five dollars in there or something just. Did I? Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's something to do. The other thing that it, you know I would recommend is either um, get a financial advisor if you have enough you know money to really invest. But in the beginning, you might want to just uh, go to E Trade and invest in uh, what are called index funds or mm -hmm. mutual, um, mutual funds, funds because what's uh, what's good about those is it's a group of um companies it's not you're not investing in one company and if that one company fails then you're you know you lose your money and if you can't afford to put it into a house yet there's actually real estate um like stocks that you stocks, can invest in yeah and basically you're investing in them investing in real estate so building new um i can't think right now my brain is like yeah, well, um, and the other building thing, building new establishments and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. yeah, that's what my boss did because he he would build a lot of like apartment complexes. He had the um storage, storage facilities, facilities. Yeah. and so not only would he be building, but he would also be investing in other groups and um have a share of everything. So. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, if you use it. A website like E-Trade, you don't pay any fees. It's it, you only pay if you pull your money out early and things like that. So, it you know it's kind of nice, um, and they'll even give you some amount of guidance on uh, your investments. So anyway, that's those are some basics that I wish I knew. Financial advisor is smart in your twenties because although you can do it by yourself and it is kind of fun. Um, it's also it's important risky. to build a foundation and a lot of times what financial advisors do is they test the amount of risk you want to take with your money and your ultimate goal with it. Yep. So if it's retirement, even if you're someone who loves to risk their money, maybe take $5 or 5% out of the money you're investing in total and put that in an extremely high risk accounts or like stocks or trades, whatever. And then yeah. the rest, you'll put it in, like you said, a more mutual fund or a large dividend. Something a little more conservative and yeah, so it will actually walk you through like a quiz and it'll just have a lot of information about what exactly your goals are. Yeah, it's good to have somebody that, knows, the, the nice thing about that is they know what they're doing. They spend a lot of time doing the research um, you know, we can research it ourselves, but you it's know, been tested over a lot large amount of people, so you know that it's um it's just, they've got a lot of experience. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, so those are those are a couple things. Another thing I would do, um I wish I had done when I was young is um in my twenties is learn to cook. I know that sounds silly, but learn to cook. It is it's silly. It's You're a, a silly guy. <laughs> it's a it's a skill that you'll use your whole life, right? Just so, like everything else, cleaning. You didn't learn how to do that too. Yeah, I learned a little bit when I was young, and I'm glad I did. And I learned more as I went on. But you know, learn some basics. Learn how to how to cook. Learn how to be a house. You're gonna have to cook your entire life. You know, uh, unless you just happen to marry someone that wants to do all that. But... That wasn't controversial if you hear what I said. <laughs> learn how to be a housewife. Yeah, I mean, learn learn how to do things around the house. But um, it's coming from a back. So... Learn it young. Yeah, you should know how to do the dishes and do the laundry and all those things. Um, no. You can't rely on... Uh, you can't rely on other people to, to do that. I rely on Logan to do cook my food. Do you? He's a good cook. I don't like to cook. My, but you do my goal how. this year is to take a culinary course. Mm -hmm. I enjoy making toast and grilled cheese. Well, and you're good at baking. Yes, so, I have that going for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend that. And also related to that would be um, 
etiquette. So yes, when, oh, that's a great one. Give so, me a high five. <laughs> for example, a lot of times in business, you're invited to a, a fancy dinner, or you're taking out uh, clients to dinner, mm -hmm. and you don't want to be trying to figure out which fork to use or which spoon to use or no, I'm um, texting you going wait can I use inside or outside for yeah you you want to know those things right it's you after two it, you put me through two etiquette courses yeah okay. yeah well and the basic rule of thumb for you for those of you that want to know is you work you start on the outside and work your way in so the fork on the outside is for your salad and the one next to the plate the spoon is on the outside is for your soup spoon on the inside is for ice cream <laughs> so it'll usually go spoon and knife so oh yeah so the spoon is for what you would use your spoon for and no the one at the top we put a the, spoon at the top the top is usually for a dessert or coffee yeah that's what i was saying all right um so those are you know some basics and then if you ever host a party you want to know how to set the table and do some basic things yeah. like that what side so, wait what side does your napkin go on what side does your napkin go on? Mm -hmm. uh, your napkin goes on your lap. <laughs> Once you sit down. No, when you set, when you the, set table. the table, you put it in the middle. I do. I, or you you put it under the... Uh, the on uh, the left foot. or right hand side, though. It doesn't matter. It's a trick question. Yeah, that was a trick question. You're trying to stump me. Um, but the knife and spoon go on the right. The two forks on the left. Um, the beverage goes above the, the knife. To the right, just a little. And then the coffee, the coffee cup goes, goes on to a plate, right, but to the left. But no, the saucer goes to the left. If you have a bread plate, it goes to the left. The coffee cup would go to the right or up above. There you go. That's the basics. Um, another thing I would do differently is that's all the educator can you give them. What else do you want? When you finish. Set it on top of your, your napkin on top of your plate indicates that you're done with your meal. Mm, good. Always also, do it later. your fork and knife in whatever silverware you have, you just place it, kind of place it down on your plate now, um, here's a together, and that shows that you're done as well. Yeah, cross it. No, like together. like. Oh, then crossing means more or yeah. next course? I don't know. Um, here's, here's a controversial... Thing. Ask me. So, what do you think is appropriate amount to tip for certain things? Because here's the thing: is tipping has gotten out of control. I will go to a coffee shop now, and it says, and, it and all says, they did is have you, you know, hand you a muffin or okay, something. And you know what the worst thing is? We always talk about this one, but self serve froyo. They ask me for a tip. I just back up the screen. All right. So here's my. Here's my advice on this. Two cents. My two cents. Yeah. Do what you want. But I feel like, especially right now after COVID, it is really hard for companies to get employees to come in to work for some reason, right? It's been really tough. Because uh, they're making off of unemployment. Maybe. But um, I like to encourage people that are doing a good job and actually showing up for work. And so even if uh, even if it's not like, a large percentage i'll give them a buck or two um if you know if all i did is i served myself right all they did is bring me up and hand me a spoon or something then yeah i'll, I'll still give them a, a dollar or two just not sure. me i'm broke but in terms of a, a sit-down restaurant then yeah i tip i typically go 20 percent round up something like that most services you do tip, like when you get a massage, when you always tip you when you get your nails done. Service done, but it's like I'm not going to tip you a single dollar if the you lighting just turned I know off. it's really weird. I thought my eyes were going bad or something. <laughs> Did you get this happen? Like, oh my gosh, what's happening? It's like fading. Am I blacking out right now? I don't know what's happening. My computer's going. It literally going. just turned me yellow. Like, All right, so let's keep let's keep moving on here. So, what other etiquette? So when you sit down at a table uh, for dinner, you yeah. put your napkin on your lap. No, that was just a controversial opinion. Oh, okay. Because yeah. like people are fed up with how much tipping has gone out of control. So all they do is they make you feel real crappy about yourself when they flip around the screen. They're like. I try to think of it differently. Like you can never go wrong being generous. 
I just never go wrong I'm with your time. Sales. I don't get tips. Right, but wouldn't you like it if somebody bought you a cup, cup of coffee or, you know, gave you a gift card? No, I would like it if I didn't have to spend my money on someone else's coffee to then be able to afford my own. All right, well, there we go. We both have different opinions. Controversy. Take what you take it for what you Maybe want. Maybe I'm just really mean, but that's just not my thing. Yeah, well, um, you're also a lot. We're already paying a lot for things, so it's hard yeah. to tip on top of it, especially when that's you save right. yourself. That's so right. I think you could go either way on that on the self service stuff, but I always err on the side of generosity. You know what? That's really changed my mind. Yeah. I'm not going to tip at all. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go to new restaurants. I'm like, no tip. Do we want to move to the next topic? Yeah. Okay. So the next thing I would say I would do uh, differently is try to really decide uh, or have an idea of some different career paths that I'm interested in early. So that way, while I'm still in college, I could do some internships um, like you did. And I'm, I wish I had, <laughs> you did. Um, but that was something that I learned from not doing it that I saw other people do and it was really successful. So kind of have an idea, do a couple of different internships. You did one in finance, you did one in sales. You really like sales. You actually interviewed some people that were in marketing and um, what was it, event planning. And so you got to feel for some different types of careers. That's another thing you could do that I would recommend in addition to just doing internships is do some um, information interviews. So yeah. Kind of have an idea if you think you want to go into marketing, you want to go into sales, you want to go into finance, reach out to somebody that you know or reach out to a company and find out who their CFO is if you want to go into finance and say, hey, I'm considering this as a career path. Can I get 15 or 30 minutes on your calendar to interview you and just get an understanding of what the job's like and see if it's something I'm interested in? And, you know, most people would be happy to do that for you. And my suggestion, um, just to bank off of that, is, like, people don't have to spend 15 minutes with you. So if you are the person that is looking to have a conversation with people in different industries, make sure you follow up with, like, a very sweet thank you, thank you email, no. letter, no, and then sweets is always a good option. So yeah. send them. If you don't have a lot of money, you don't have to give them anything expensive, but no. it's just a gesture to say thank you when people do stuff like that for you. And yeah. they can help with them on the phone. They're helping you be a good connection. Career path. Yes. So 30 bucks to figure out if you want to move forward with that career. For example, I really thought I wanted to do corporate event planning. Mm -hmm. That was part of my um goals for kind of a while. And then I spoke to one and COVID hit. COVID. So yeah. I kind of changed career paths and that's okay. But it the conversation is ultimately what made yeah. me realize that it wasn't something I wanted to do. And then with the finance one, I just did like a virtual internship because again, COVID and just learning about the day-to-day -day job of someone who was a fin financial analyst, I realized not want to be boring for you. Yeah. yeah. So Good. Yeah. So, yeah, so figure out what you want to do or have an idea of some things that you might want to do and then yeah. and then do some interviews or do uh, some internships and see if it's really something you want to spend the rest of your life doing. And then the nice thing about the internships is that sometimes, and like with Emma, for example, it can parlay into an actual job because you're already working there as an intern. So it can work out really well for you. You can ask the company, like, is this something that can turn into a full-time position? Exactly. And they'll tell you. Yep. And if it doesn't, maybe find a different internship. Find one that does. Because, 100%. Yeah. The, Most will. Mm -hmm. if, yeah. And even if you decide that that's not the career path for you, you now have some experience on your, on your resume that doesn't go away. You've got that. It can help you get yeah. a different job, even if it's in another field. No experience is bad experience. It teaches you lessons. All experience is good experience. How's that? Another way to spin it. <clears throat> Another thing, um, and you actually brought this up when we were talking earlier, is understand what your values are. What is it that you value in a career, in a as job, a as a human being? Like, what kind of person do you want to work for? What kind of organization do you want to work for? And, um, and then let that guide some of your decisions, because... 
at the end of the day, when you get older like me, <laughs> you're not going to look back. You, you know, it matters a lot who who you're working with, how, you who know, you're what, working for, who you're working for, and um, and you think back like. And you want to feel good about the things that you've done in your career. And you want to feel good about the choices that you made. The so, interactions you've had. Yeah. And I think I would also, um, something related to that that I think I shared with you is that I, I also think it's really important that you treat people right. Whether it's, you know, whether it it's... Uh, That's a whole different one. The gate, the, the you know, people that you're talking on on the phone, whether it's a customer, whether it's another coworker somebody that doesn't even work in your department, the admin or whoever, treat them well and be kind and respectful to, to everyone because, um, well, A, you never know. You may be reporting to that person someday or you need, may need them for something. But it also, uh, you want to look back and feel good about what you've done. You don't want to be that guy that kind of stepped on other people, climbed on other people's shoulders to get to the top, so to speak, um, because it doesn't feel good. You know, later in life, you go, you know, I, I was, I didn't really, I don't really feel good about those choices I made or the things that I said or the things that I did to those people. Um, you know, I had, I think I've shared this story, but I have a manager and I'm, I'm hoping that um, we can, we can talk him into coming on the, on, on the podcast someday. But um, he was just a really good leader and he still is. Um, but I remember even even when you had to terminate somebody. And as a manager, you have to, there's there's times where you have to terminate people. It's just part of the job, hiring and, and terminating and, and promoting and all those things in between. So, um, but every time he did, it was just a really pleasant conversation. The person sometimes would even thank him at the end of the conversation and they part ways and things are great. And I'm like, how do you, how do you do that? What, what is the, you have some kind of Jedi mind trick. And he told this story on the last one. I think I did, yeah. And he just said, no, I just treat people the way I would want to be treated in the same situation if I were them. So I think that one... There's a lot to be said there. One thing that was important for me was when I was actually interviewing and one of the questions was about values or something. And he said, pick three words that describe you. And that... That question came up a lot, actually, during all my interviews is, like, tell me two words that describe you or whatever it was. Yeah. And I think that that can go a long way when choosing your values is, like, there's a whole list of them. You can be patient, kind, understanding, yeah. dedicated, you know, Find knowledgeable. What defines you as a... Pick three words that you feel, like, truly describe you and maybe even ask others, like, what... What word pops into your head when you think of me? And then think right. about that word for yourself. And sometimes doing that allows you to understand how people view you yeah. and what value they see in you and also the value you see in yourself. And sticking to that will help determine kind of where you want to go in life because it'll steer you clear of anything that you don't want to be involved in or any business manager, whatever it is, if you stick to those core values. So in relation to that, I would say that the other thing you should do early is start setting goals for yourself and reevaluate them every year. Like we we did our, um, if you need help with that, look at one of our other podcasts. We did one, Last one. Well, we did one on goal setting, a whole one on goal setting. Yes. And then we did one on vision board. Yes. So, you know, set goals. You don't have to do a vision board, but a vision board helps to achieve those goals and helps keep them top of mind. Um, but set goals and reevaluate them every year and um, you'll find that you'll be a lot more successful in achieving things when you write them down and set them as a goal and break them down and figure out what steps need to be taken to get to those goals. And sometimes that breaks down the, um, what is it? So what's like the, when you, uh, steps? psychological barriers, path, barriers. thank you. Sometimes by setting goals, it breaks the psychological barriers because you've already determined in your mind you have to do it, that you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of just dismissing the fact that you're fearful about reaching it or doing that. Right. Um, because as you thought, as you said that, my instant thought literally was like, 
I know what my goals are, but I'm so scared I won't reach them. But by setting those as my goals, it's almost just like I'm determined that it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then building up the steps to reach those goals are going to help me accomplish them. Yeah. Actually. And, and, and socialize them a little bit, share yeah. them with other people. Cause um, if you leave them in your brain, that's where the psychological barriers kind of knock them down. Like, Oh, well, you've already done this. You don't need to reach that goal. Like you've done good enough or like, right. you know, it, it's just pushing the boundary. And the other thing I've found is like when I share them with people, sometimes they have ideas like, hey, have you thought about this? Or maybe if you do this, it'll help you achieve that goal. Or let me connect you with so-and-so. He did that. And um, and so that might help you achieve your goals too when you share them with other people. Yeah. Well, you know, hold yourself accountable. So a couple other things. Work. Yes, that's always valuable. <laughs> a couple other things I would say. Um <laughs> is uh, connect with people, stay connected. So when you you have that person that you did the um, information interview with or people that you connect with in business or interviewed, um, or you go to a conference and you meet somebody, connect with them on LinkedIn or um, you know get their phone number and stay, stay connected because over time, your network, there's a saying, your network is your net worth. Your network can be real valuable because um, they, you know, um, so many times when you're looking for a job, for example, or you're looking to gain access into a company or get introduced to somebody, you, you know, if you have a big enough network and you're good to people and you, you know, connect with them, then, you know, someone you know might be able to help you get an interview or get, you know, a conversation with somebody. And so, Stay connected with people, <clears throat> and I'll share uh, I'll share a couple of things as bonuses um, that I actually did do that I'm glad I did do when I was younger. And one of those was uh, I had kids when I was young. I I was young uh, in my 20s when I started having children. I have three now, but they're adults. And I think if I hadn't, then you know we wouldn't be able to do this today, right? Have this podcast and talk about business from the pers perspectives that we do. And I I think, uh, and, and all this is personal choice, right? But for me, it, it worked. I thought it worked out well because when you're young, you have a lot of energy, you can coach soccer, you can do all those things. Not that I don't have the energy now, but different uh, stage of life. And, um, and the nice thing about when you're young is you really don't know anybody <laughs> any better. And, you know, you kind of just figure it out. You figure it out as you go and find your way with, you know, raising kids and and um, and uh, doing all those kind of things. So I'm glad that I did that. I started that when I was young because now I have these kind of opportunities today. Um, I know a lot of people prefer to wait, and that's fine. But that's that that would be my advice. And then um, learn to type. The best, the most practical class I ever took was my type. They had a typing class when I was in high school. I know that this is dating myself, but we actually typed on a typewriter. Oh, yeah, uh, it was on a type, say that. on an official typewriter. But I, I learned to type, and now I can type pretty fast. And honestly, I think it saved me hours of time because it's something that I use probably hundreds of hours of time because it's something that I use every single day in my job. And if I was having to look for the keys. Here's what I'll say about this. Yes. I completely disagree with you. Tell me why. Because I'm smart. Okay. I didn't learn to type no matter how many classes my parents put me through. I was. Okay. All throughout um, elementary school, middle school, high school approaches. And then we have to type our essays. You got to get something done. You learn how to do something that minute. And the reason I know this is because my grandpa, what war was he in, Gary? Uh, World War II. No, he was in Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah. And he told them that he knew how to type. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> it was Vietnam. And he told them that he knew how to type, even though he did it. Remember? Mm -hmm. So that he wasn't put on the front line. And he picked that up real fast. <laughs> so I will tell you, 
Um, don't learn how to type. It takes hundreds of hours and your brain does not, not true. Pick up. Do it when you have to do it. And for example, now I can type without looking at my keyboard. Um, but you don't type properly, right? So you're not no, like fast. No, I type properly, but I'm fast. Not, I, I took the quiz. I scored phenomenally. I could probably beat you. I'm I'm a pro, especially. <laughs> okay, well, I I thought it was helpful for me. I found it very um, non-practical to have to hunt and pack for the numbers. And I can type without looking and I, I use it every day. So it's a practical thing that you can use every single day, just like cooking. Um, so I would advise learning to type properly so that you pick it up and you can you can do it um, and, and get fast at it. When you learn to do it right, then you can get faster and faster. Yeah, I get faster too. Okay. So there's another one we disagree on, two different viewpoints, but listen to me because I'm the older guy. Um, you know what they should have? Oh my God, I'm a genius. I just invented it. Wait, voice the text? Would that be yes, something? That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, wait, why don't we just they have, do that? have that? On your computer, you're sending an email and you're like, hey, Susie, I think comma, they, enter. I think they Let's do have it on some computers. On January 15th. Bam, your email's done. Send. Susie, send. <laughs> I think it's available somewhere. I, I just have never used that for on my computer. Um, plus, I, I don't know, I think as I type and it's sort of a natural thing for me. So I think that's all I have. Um, those are my those are my pointers. Okay, now my turn to tell you what you need to know about your 50s. Okay, go ahead. Let's hear it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's it for today's dilemma, but we will catch you next week with another one. What's your fun question? Fun question of the day? Mm -hmm. of, the day. of the day okay so we we're talking about our road trips now sorry go ahead is that we're going on a road trip to scottsdale okay some My... people have really weird ones like bean dip and burritos not mine but i like to eat twizzlers when i'm on the road and i also like uh, cashews cashew cashews those are my two probably my two go-to's when i'm on the road what about you I like salt and pepper pistachios. Okay. But it has to be roasted salt and pepper pistachios. All right. Plain ones, salted. And then the next one is like, I love high chews and gum and Diet Coke. Yeah, Coke Zero for me. Um, okay, I was going to ask you this. Can I ask one more just yeah. for the heck of it? Uh, we've, we've been talking about Disneyland lately. What's your favorite ride at Disneyland? I don't want to talk about Disneyland. You don't want to talk about Disneyland. You don't well, have a favorite I'm ride? I'm boycotting them. Oh, you're not happy with them? You lived in Florida for a little while. You didn't like the way they were treating you? No comment. I like the... How about any amusement park ride? I like the princesses. You like all the princesses? Okay. Ariel, to be specific. All right. My favorite ride is uh, Space Mountain. All right. See you guys.